So hello and welcome to Steve Knows. Today, I want to share with you how we easily get access to thousands of free games, Meta's faux pas, and some sadness as Quest Cloud PCVR shuts down. We also have new Quest features and so much more, so I think that's enough chinwagging. Let's get started. Now this story had me standing up at my desk when I got the message from a SideQuest affiliate letting me know that this feature was coming, but I was under embargo. But it is here right now. So SideQuest have produced an in-headset web installer so you can install SideQuest games without ever having to leave your headset. It can be done directly from the web browser. The caveat is though, you still need to have developer mode enabled, so you still need to go through that initial setup, and you do still need to install the web installer via computer or a phone, but from then on, that is a one-time setup. You can install games from inside your headset via the web. This will also allow you to execute the ADB commands that SideQuest have available that do things like boost your in-game visuals, increase your video capture settings. This is all thanks to an API feature called Web USB that enables a USB interface to devices from a web browser so it can mimic being plugged into a computer, for example, putting it simply, and you can install games that way. Although I could not actually get this working initially through the SideQuest application, so if you're doing this setup, please install it via the web browser instead. So if you find yourself like me thinking, why is this not working? Use the website, not the app. Then inside the headset, just boot the SideQuest application, find a game and install it. This is going to be under unknown sources. So at the top of your game list, click all and then find unknown sources there. This makes the experience super convenient to pick up and try new games, getting access to thousands more free experiences, even discovering App Lab titles, which Meta seem to hide. Just that one time setup, and if you don't own a PC or a mobile phone, find a friend. Hopefully they will do it for you because it's a one time setup and you have access to such a huge catalogue. And speaking of free, since it's the weekend, you may be looking for something else to play and you're in luck as Thief Simulator is offering free access to the game's prologue via App Lab. This is all in hope to incentivize players to pick up the game if they enjoy it. It's also a chance for you to try the game out and experience it without having to make a purchase commitment. I would love to see more of this in VR because what you see on a flat screen does not translate to what it's like inside a headset. So I think this is great. And the prologue is where you have to escape from a prison before you begin your side hustling of robbing the Greenview neighborhood. So out of prison, trying to get back in. I'll link it down below because you don't have to search for it through App Lab that way. You can just click the link and in. Joy. So on Tuesday, Meta put on their blog some version 63 features, just a couple. There is something being introduced called Quest Cash, which is a credit system that you can store and use to purchase games and gifts. So instead of using money to purchase things, you use your money to buy the store credits and use the credits to purchase things because having an extra step in a process is always fun. Although this is great for gifting for birthdays and it does enable the fact that you can set a spending limit on your game's expenditure each month and it allows for supervision if you're a parent and one of your children has a quest. So it is great for that because you don't want to wake up one morning and find out what's this? £2,000 on Gorilla Tag Cosmetics. What? And what's even crazier is you can actually request cash from others. But please be aware of scams because now people can request currency. It's going to happen. So please be vigilant. I do find it rather interesting though to see Meta getting into this sort of currency exchange transactional space. Very curious. Is this the first step into something larger? I don't know. I could be thinking too much into it. So that is launching this month and we also have exclusive features for the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro, not the Quest 3. You can now lie down. <laughs> you can now lie down if you want to use your headset horizontally. What are they trying to say? Quest 2 and Quest Pro units need to rest up. So to use this lying down feature, you'll find it in your experimental section and this should help with you consuming media content whilst you want to chillax, put the feed up. So you may have encountered the big meta shutdown this week where Facebook was down, Instagram, threads, they were all down, even our MetaQuest headsets. They started prompting users that something went wrong and you couldn't boot up your application. It's not really a great sign that my headset isn't working offline because you could build a house with quests at this point they were essentially bricks 
Although, Meta's headsets don't require a constant internet connection to the server to work, so what was actually going on here? Well, David Heaney commented, and BozTank actually confirmed, that it wasn't in fact the headset required a connection to the server, but the headset was told by the server to log out. Ruben, one of the VPs, also confirmed this behavior. This was a bug, it was a super rare thing to happen, so you may have found when you picked up your headset, it asked you to log in again, and put in a code to confirm it was actually you, so... That's what was happening. But a really sad story now, although that was bad news, this is sad news. Another fist-shaking moment to Meta's policies and management of third parties. So Plutosphere is shutting down now because Meta maintains their ban on cloud VR streaming services on Quest. Plutosphere used to let you log into external servers and run and stream high-end PC VR experiences to your standalone devices through the internet. And I did cover using this service. I was very, very impressed. You could play Beat Saber on low difficulties. If you found a close enough data center, you'd experience minimal latency and could enjoy these high-end experiences at a bargain price. It had this model where you would buy tokens and you would spend those tokens for playtime. If you have existing tokens for Plutosphere, they're going to be valid for the next three to four weeks, I believe. So Meta's policy states that headset connections can only be made by hardware that the user has local access to, excluding Meta's own servers, of course. And I hope the fact that they've maintained their stance on this, because this is something we want them to develop. It's such a great feature to be able to have on standalone hardware. I hope that they are going to bring something forward to replace it. I, it's sad to see this. I know Plutosphere had a great community behind it, and I was grateful for it. VR's in quite a funny place right now. It's a topic for another video, but it's just bubbling in my chest. There's just so much going on and so much... Mm. So some quick fire news stories now, some interesting things that I found this week. And the first is Horizon World is dropping a new map that is an official CBS survival world. I started watching the show in the UK recently, and so I can finally relate to the many years of folk in the States talking about it. It is celebrating its 46th season. In it, you can play survivor games with friends or alone, and the events page isn't live quite yet, but I will link it down below in the description so you can sign up and enjoy this if you want to play. This is for the USA and the Canada only, though. Come on! There was also this story that was about a game called Tiny Archers, which isn't what caught my eye. It was something that was within this report, and it's the smart bow accessory. I thought archery is a huge classic VR mechanic, but why have I never seen a VR accessory for archery? Do you guys know of any? I could just be being stupid, but you don't come across them that often. This smart bow has an attachment that allows it to support the Oculus Quest. But it doesn't look like it's going to be helpful for games that have an optional bow for use. But it's all about a static experience where you use a bow. So it's kind of limited, but it looks so dang cool. And this is your reminder, super important, to ensure you have migrated your old Oculus accounts to the new Meta accounts before March the 29th. Because you will lose everything if you have not done this. The purchases that you've made, your game saves. Everything will be removed if you do not migrate. So please confirm. Just double check that you have done this. I'll link the document on how to do this down below in the description because that would just be absolute hell. And it's not going to inspire people to jump back into VR once you've lost it all. So please make sure. So, well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Massive thanks for the support. Hit subscribe. It helps me out a lot. But more importantly, have a great week. Enjoy those free games and happy gaming. Good day.